welcome to Brooke Does Yoga. My name is Brooke. Let's do some yoga together. Today we're going to be looking at the posterior chain or all of the muscles along the back of our bodies from the soles of our feet all the way up the backs of the legs, through your back body, through your neck, through the back of your head, all the way to the crown. There is a sheet of a tissue called fascia that runs along that back body chain in addition to all of the muscles that exist back there. Um, and so our flexibility along those lines is all interconnected. And what I hear very often uh, is that people want to address or work on hamstring flexibility. So particularly if you are a cyclist or a runner, that can be an area um, that you really need to work on. And a lot of times we feel the most tension in our hamstrings, which is the backs of our thighs, um, but it's connected to so many other things that may help achieve that flexibility that you're looking for. So today you will probably want a couple of blocks or block alternatives. These could be Tupperware containers or shoe boxes or uh, sturdy books. Just something to bring the floor a little bit closer to you. And you will most likely want a blanket or a cushion, just something to sit up on a little bit to help in the seated postures. Go ahead and grab your props and we will start on our feet today. It doesn't really matter where on your mat you are. Just come to a stand and place your feet about hip width apart. Nothing too fancy. And just take a moment to get your feet nice and strong. So I like to kind of rock forward and back a little bit and then maybe a little bit side to side and start to find that place where the weight rests really evenly from front to back, side to side, right to left. Good. And then give a little bit of tone in your low belly, just enough to help you lift up and out. A little roll of the shoulders, just let them softly relax down and back. Good. and then take the hands and just gently interlace them at the base of your head, right where your head and your neck meet together. And press the elbows wide, just slightly. If you start to notice that your back starts to arch a little bit, just find the place where you can find a balance pressing the elbows back and still stretching the spine completely straight that we're not arching one way or the other. We just are lifting straight up like there's a straight line from the very top of your head all the way down through your body to your heels. So that might mean that your elbows are not, you know, all the way out. We're finding a balance between those two things. Press the hands into the back of your head and give a gentle press of your head into your hands. Mm hmm good. And then we'll start to just take a little twist from side to side here. Let the knees be soft. Let the hips rotate with the spine. Maintaining that press of the elbows and the connection of the skull and the hands. And this can be as slow or as fast as feels good today. This is just warming up the spine, warming and loosening the back muscles, the backs and the undersides of the arms, back of the neck. You might start to feel the breath here as well. The twist kind of presses the breath out of the body a little bit. Good. Now come back to center, gently. 
Release the hands, shake out the arms a little bit. Good, and then come back into that position, interlacing the hands behind the skull, little press of the head back into the hands, little press of the elbows. Good, and then we're gonna start to roll down the spine really slowly so that we can be super cognizant of moving the spine linearly, vertebra by vertebra. We don't wanna jump ahead here. So we're gonna start by just dropping the chin towards the chest. And already here, notice if other parts of your spine are trying to get involved. And really let this just be the chin dropping towards your chest. Nothing else needs to move. Everything else is completely the same as if you're standing up totally straight. And it's okay if the elbows start to move forward a little bit here. And then almost like you're rolling yourself up like a cinnamon roll, you're gonna start to roll down the spine, curving the spine, again, vertebra by vertebra. So let just the top of the spine round. And again, notice if the legs are trying to help or if the lower parts of your spine are trying to curve first. And go as slowly as you need to, to really make this vertebra by vertebra, top to bottom, curling in. And you'll curl all the way down your spine until your knees reach, or your elbows reach somewhere near your knees. And then gently, slowly, roll the opposite way. So again, notice if automatically your head just wants to pop right up, if your upper back wants to straighten immediately. Start by just unrolling the very base of your spine. And then from there, slowly stack your vertebra one on top of the other. So the upper spine is still rounded in, just the lower spine is unraveling first. Eventually we'll come all the way back up, the head will lift, the elbows will go back wide. Good. Let's take two more like that. Again, going as slowly as you need to, to ensure that we're really going from top to bottom and then from bottom to top. And also check in to see if one side of your spine wants to move before the other. Sometimes I notice the left or the right side of my spine wants to curl first. See if you can evenly roll on both sides using the paraspinal muscles equally. And this might get easier as you go. Notice if you're holding your breath. Good, end of your third roll, let the arms come down. Do another little shake out through the arms, maybe through the legs. Good, and then coming back to that position, hands behind the head. Mm -hmm. Hopefully those arms are a little bit warmed up, a little bit looser now. We're gonna do very similar to what we just did, but we're going to roll this time at a little bit of an angle so that we come across the body. Bring your right elbow to your left knee. So same sort of action, curling through the spine. Just at a little bit more of an angle this time to target some of the other back muscles. 
Good. And we'll do three on each side like this. Rolling up and down and across. Again, going as slowly as you need to to make sure that we're moving with integrity through the spine. Use your breath to start to tune in deeper to what's happening in the body here. Once again, noticing if your legs are trying to help. Notice if maybe your jaw is trying to help. Letting the forehead muscles relax. Good, and after your three on each side, once again, at standing, release the arms. And then find your way all the way down onto your mat. And find your uh, towel or cushion or blanket and just place it right underneath your sitting bones. So you can sit right on top of it and then do a little bit of a slide off so that the flesh of your glutes are being held by the blanket or pillow, but the bones of your pelvis are sort of sliding off of the blanket. Good. And we might have a little bend in the knees here. Notice your spine and your pelvis if you're really sinking back into the low back and the pelvis, probably due to tension. You might pad this blanket a little bit more to get the hips even higher. Or just put that little bend in your knees and see if that helps the spine come really straight up. More important to have the straight spine here than straight legs. Flex your toes up towards the sky and actively press your heels down into your mat. Good. And then take your hands by the sides of your legs just as a little anchor. Make your hands nice and active to anchor you down here. You can press down into the mat a little bit to give the spine some lift up and out of the pelvis. And then point your toes forward and lean forward. So we're just hinging at the hips here. Back is still nice and straight. Again, hands are kind of like a, a kickstand or an anchor to help traction this little bend. Really point the toes forward. On your inhale, flex your toes and sit back up. Good, couple more like that. Exhale, point and fold. Inhale, rise up. So as you fold, come to the end range that you can, just hinging at the hips, keeping a straight spine. As you start to feel the spine round, back out a little bit to that place where the spine can be nice and flat. And this is a technique called nerve flossing that is helping sort of make a, a pathway along the back of the body to remove any negative sensations. Good, let's do one more point and fold. Inhaling straight up. Good. Let the legs relax for a second, maybe wiggle them out a little bit. Awesome. And then once again, press the heels down onto the mat nice and strong. Lift up through the belly. And just like when we were standing, watch your sort of middle ribs. See if they're starting to stick out as we come into a tiny back bend here. And pull your middle ribs in towards center and in towards the middle of your body so that you're nice and tall and straight with some firmness in the front body there. Maybe we lift the arms up high. This is a bigger lever, so it's more strength for the low back and the belly. See if you can maintain this firmness on the front body, straightness in the back body, as once again, we hinge at the hips 
and take a little forward fold. Bring the hands down to touch. Inhale all the way back up, nice and straight and strong. Exhale, fold and tap. Inhale, are you still pressing your heels down into the mat? One more. Inhale, good. Bring the hands back down by the sides of the body like that little anchor or kickstand. And then this time, like we did standing, roll down the spine, aiming to get your forehead in between your knees. It might not get there. That's okay. This is called spinal flexion when we round the spine like this. Pulling your belly button towards your spine and towards the ceiling will help deepen the flexion of the spine, the curve. Good, let's do one more. Inhaling up. Beautiful, relax the legs, give them a little shake. Okay, last seated forward fold here. We're gonna externally rotate our legs. So take your toes and turn them out towards the sides of your mat as much as you can, like ballerina. Like your feet are just gonna flop down and make a straight line um, parallel with the top of your mat. Good, and then check in with your spine and see if you're still sitting up nice and tall. Option to keep the hands down for a little bit of extra support, or you can bring the hands together at the heart. This is a little bit more core work. Once again, hinge up the hips, keep a flat back, forward fold. Inhaling up. Let's take five more little pulses like that. Trying to move towards the end of your range here, right before the spine starts to round, reaching out of the low back, out of the pelvis. Good. Bring the feet back to neutral. And then the opposite, pigeon toe your feet, internally rotating as much as possible, rolling the legs towards each other from the hip sockets. Again, Option to keep the hands down for support or at heart for more effort. And hinge up the hips, little pulse forward. Four more. Make sure the toes keep turning them towards each other. Don't let them relax and flop outwards. Good, back up to neutral, bring the legs to neutral. Shake out if needed. And then bend the knees and place the soles of the feet on the floor. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh and your left hand can come down behind you to support. That's okay. And we're just gonna take our right hand and I'll face you. And we're just gonna have this hand sort of help, point, and then flex the foot. Good. And play with how far you take each of these actions. Good. Release that, bring the right foot down. Cross the left ankle over the right knee and support behind as needed. And then just a little assisted point and flex here. And depending on sort of where you put your hand, you can give some resistance and activate some different muscles. Good. All right, release that. Go ahead and move your blanket if you're sitting on it. And then come all the way down onto the back in a nice gentle way. Soles of the feet can stay on the floor. 
if your upper back has some tension and you feel like your head is kind of falling back here, go ahead and just stack your blanket or pillow behind your head just to give you more of a straight line through your neck so that your upper back can relax. Good. Now take your left heel up towards the sky and we'll start to do some internal and external rotations, almost like you're waving at the ceiling with your foot. So taking the toes out towards the left and then turning your left toes towards the right as much as you can. Inhale to take it wide, exhale, bring it in. And depending on your unique body, you may find one of these actions more difficult than the other. Just notice what that is. Good, and then bring left foot down and switch sides, right foot goes up. Turn right toes to the right, and then right toes towards the left, across the body as much as possible. Yeah. Just a little wave. Hi ceiling. Hi sky. And the knee can be bent here, that's okay too. All right, right foot comes down. Bring the left leg back up high. And then turn left toes out towards the left and bend your left knee. So your left knee is gonna come down towards the outside of the left side of your body. Bring your left hand up to support your left leg. So I have my elbow on the ground here just supporting the leg out to the side and then straighten your left knee, press your left thigh into your left hand, and as you straighten that leg, make sure that the right hip can stay down on the mat. So that may mean that you, this left leg doesn't straighten all the way, that's okay. Left knee bends. Continue the press of left thigh and left hand together as you take a couple more of these little pulses through the leg, Bending and extending to your range of motion. Good. And release that. And we'll move to the right side. Right toes turn towards the right. Right knee bends. Pressing right thigh into the right hand. And then extending through the leg, keeping the left hip bone really heavy down towards the floor. See if you can keep the left knee pointing straight up towards the sky as we take this motion with the right leg. Good. Right foot releases down to the mat. Inhale, left leg high. Again, we might have a little bend in the knee here. That's totally okay. Take your hands and interlace them on the back of your uh, left leg, check in with your toes and see if you can point your toes directly back towards your face. They may have a tendency to fall to one side or the other. And then press the back of your left leg into your hands and your hands into your leg so that they have some traction together. Good. Release the traction and without using your hands, Lift your left leg closer to your face. See if you can keep your tailbone and your hips weighted down to the ground. So this might be a really small movement, a little unassisted stretch. And then once again, press hands into leg, leg into hands. Exhale, unassisted stretch, bringing the leg closer to your face. And exhale, press. Inhale, unassisted stretch. One more. Exhale, press. Inhale, stretch. Good. Bring left leg down and switch sides. Right leg goes high. Check in with your toes. Make sure they point straight towards your face. Press leg into hand, hand into legs. 
and then left left or right leg closer to your face. Again, keeping that right hip in particular and your tailbone down on the mat the whole time so that we're really isolating the muscle here and growing length. Try to be unconcerned with how straight the leg is or how close it comes to the face. Just tune in and learn something about your body. Good, last one. And release. Beautiful. If you have a blanket or pillow behind your head, go ahead and move that out of the way. Hug your knees in towards your chest and start to take some rock and rolls up and down the spine. Notice how the back body feels. And then maybe roll all the way over the shins. We'll all meet in a downward facing dog. And pedal out as needed. Notice if this first downward facing dog feels any different than your first downward dog usually does. From your downward dog, come forward to a plank pose. We'll hold plank here. This can always be plank with knees down or forearm plank. Wherever you are, magnetize your inner leg lines towards each other. Press down into your hands to lift your heart away from the floor. And then send energy down the backs of your legs, out through your heels, and up from the center of you through the crown of your head. Good. Deep breath in. Full breath out. One more. Nice deep breath. On your exhale, gently, slowly lower all the way down to your belly. Keep your hands right by the sides of your body. Pull your elbows towards each other and seal the tops of your feet down to the mat. Your knees might even lift off of the floor. Use your back body strength to lift your heart forward and up. And exhale, gently lower it down. Two more like that. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. One more. Good. Press down into your hands and rise back up to all fours or plank. Downward facing dog. On your inhale, reach your right heel up towards the sky. And then come up onto the ball of your left foot, like a little Barbie foot down there. Lift your right leg higher. Keep your right leg where it is as you lower your left heel towards your mat. Inhale, lift left heel, lift right leg, lower left heel, keep right leg where it is. Bend your right knee and open your hips off to the side. Good, exhale, close your hips, reach right heel back up high. Come forward to plank, bring your right knee in towards your nose. Inhale, reach it up high. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, up high. Exhale, right knee, left elbow across your body. Inhale, up high. Exhale, bring right foot down. Bring both of your knees down and walk your hands back towards your knees. Just a quick little back bend here. Walk your hands all the way behind you. Use that to support a lift of your heart. Letting your shoulders fall away from your ears. Your shoulder blades are like a little shelf lifting your heart towards the ceiling. Good. Walk the hands forward. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Lift your left heel to the sky. Come up on the ball of your right foot, lift your left leg higher. Leave left leg 
right where it is as you sink the right heel closer to your mat. Inhale, lift right heel, lift left leg, lower right heel, good. Bend left knee, open your hips. Keep pulling your left heel towards your glute. Exhale, close your hips down, left leg goes high. Exhale, knee to nose and plank. Inhale, up high. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, up. Exhale, left knee, right elbow. Inhale, up. Exhale, left foot comes down. Bend your knees and walk your feet to your hands at the top of your mat. Good. Forward fold here. Shift your weight slightly forward so that more of your weight is in the balls of your feet and your hips are stacked roughly over your heels. A little bend behind the knees is always okay. On your inhale, bring your hands to your shins and lift up halfway. Firm your belly, flatten your back. Exhale, round and fold. Inhale, up high, reach for the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. Beautiful. Deep inhale. Full exhale. Widen your feet slightly wider than hip width. Not quite as wide as your mat, just wider than usual. And then inhale, reach your hands up high. Exhale, bend your knees and sink your hips down and back for a wide chair pose. And then turn your toes out to the sides. Bring your hands together at the heart as you sink your hips all the way down to a squat malasana. Exhale, plant your hands, parallel your feet, forward fold with wide legs. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, again like that. Hips go down and back, chair pose. Toes turn out, malasana. Toes turn in, forward fold. Inhale to lift halfway, strengthen your belly. Exhale, round in. Inhale all the way up, one more. Exhale, chair pose. Turn your toes out, squat down, malasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale all the way up. Good. Exhale, hands to the heart. Walk your feet hip width apart or to bring the toes to touch. Inhale up. Exhale all the way down. Inhale to lift up halfway. And exhale, touch the ground. Step your right foot all the way to the back of your mat. Spin your heel down so that your foot is at about a 45 degree angle, and then rise up for warrior one. Reach from the inside of your right hip down into the outer edge of your right foot, and from your right low belly up into your right hand. Deeply bend your front knee. Maybe interlace the hands together, Point your index fingers up towards the sky. That's a little bit more of a side stretch and more for your shoulders. We can always keep the hands apart. Good. Deep inhale here. Exhale, bring the hands down to both sides of the front foot. We might grab our blocks here. Turn your back heel up for an extended pyramid pose. Pull your left hip backwards, send your right hip forward, you'll find that that starts to straighten your front leg. It may not come all the way straight, that's okay. Extended pyramid pose. Let the back heel drop down towards the mat. Option to find some movement here. 
bending and straightening through the front leg. That's a great way to explore. You can start to play with keeping your low belly in contact with your thigh as you move. It may feel better today to stay still and simply fold over the front leg, finding that connection of belly to thigh, moving back hip forward and front hip back. Let the head drop off of the neck and relax. Again, this whole back body chain is all connected. So releasing the head will affect the stretch along the back of the leg. Good, one more deep breath wherever you are. Slightly bend into your front knee. Walk your block slightly forward of your front foot. Bend your back knee a little bit so that you can hop off of the back leg and find a standing split. Now, your standing leg might be a little bit bent here. We might bring hands down to the mat. Really firm your lifted leg and reach it up high, especially reaching through the inner arch of your foot and your inner leg line. Fold over that standing leg, reaching the crown of the head towards the floor. Good. Bend your standing leg and step your lifted foot all the way back down to the mat. Plant your hands on your mat and step your left foot to the back of your mat. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Inhale, reach your right heel up high. Exhale, step your right foot forward in between your hands. Spin your back heel down. Find that 45 degree angle in the back foot. Deeply bend your front knee and rise up for your warrior one on the second side. Once again, from your inner left hip, press into the outer edge of your back left foot. And from your left low belly, Really reach through your side bodies up into your hands. Option to clasp them together or leave them apart. Check in with the bend of that front leg. We're only here for a few breaths, so come into it. Good. One more deep inhale. Exhale. Bring the hands down. Find those blocks if you want them or whatever other props you have today. Turn your back heel up. Extended pyramid pose. Pull your right hip backwards towards the back of your mat. Send your left hip forward as you sink your left heel more towards the floor. Ground down through both the inner and outer edges of your right foot. And then option again to find some movement, bending and straightening with your breath. Option to stay still and simply fold over the front leg. Maybe you do a little bit of both today. Good. Take one more deep breath wherever you are. Softly bend into your front leg. Walk your block slightly forward. Bend your back knee and hop off of your back foot to a standing split. Lift your pelvis off of your standing leg so that your right sit bone starts to reach up towards the sky. We might bend that standing leg a little bit. Hands are welcome to come down towards the mat. Firm your lifted leg up high as you can get it, especially focusing on the inner seam of that lifted leg. And then the torso spills forward and down. Good, one more deep breath. Bend the standing leg, 
and step your lifted foot right next to your front foot. So you come into a standing forward bend at the top of your mat. Good, on your inhale, bring your hands to your shins and lift up halfway. Exhale, round and fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, good. Inhale, up high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, touch the ground and step your left foot all the way to the back of your mat. Crescent pose. Keep your back knee lifted, your heel pointed straight up to the sky. Deeply bending your front knee. Inhale to lift both hands high. Crescent. Just a breath or two here. Exhale, bring the hands down. And then bend your back knee to hover off of the mat a couple of inches. Press through your back thigh to straighten the leg. We'll take a few little hamstring presses like this. Try to keep the front leg completely still and just concentrate this action in that back leg. Option to stay here with hands on the floor or on blocks. For more effort, you can take the hands up towards the hips and do this action from here. This makes it a little bit more difficult to really isolate the back leg. Good. If all this is super easy, you can lift the hands up high. That's going to give you a little bit more cardio work here as well. Good. On your next exhale, if hands lifted, bring them down. Everyone walk both hands to the inside of your front foot and then walk your front foot off to the side of your mat so your right toes point off towards the right. Setting up for lizard pose. We're going to walk the back foot back slightly and then bring the back knee down to the mat. Good. And then I recommend having a block here. Most of us need a little bit more space so that we can extend the spine long out of the pelvis so that the back is nice and straight. Our torso is getting longer and longer. Good. Now, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, step your back foot forward to the outside of your left hand for a malasana. And we might, again, use the block here just for some extra space and support. We might bring the hands together at the heart and sink the hips all the way down. Now, make this a little bit more active by really rooting down into the inner arches of your feet. That's gonna activate some additional muscles in the legs and may even cause the hip, hips to lift up slightly. That's okay, that's what we're looking for today, some extra leg engagement here. Good. If the hands lifted, bring them back down to the floor or a block. Pick up your left foot and pull your left heel in towards your butt, and then step it all the way back for that lizard pose. Good. Yeah, again like that. Pick up your left foot, pull the heel towards your butt first, then step it to the outside of the left hand. Switch sides, right foot lifts, pull the heel in, step the leg back. Inhale, pick it up, set it down. So as we pick the leg up here, pulling that heel in towards the glute, we're activating the hamstring. And additionally, getting a little stretch on the front of the leg. And working our hip flexors. Good. Make sure you end with your left leg. Step it back. 
Step your right foot all the way back into a plank. Downward facing dog. Option to bring the knees down and take a child's pose or any other resting pose that feels good to you. You might just kneel. Three deep breaths where you are. On your next inhale from downward facing dog, reach your left heel up towards the sky and step your left foot forward in between your hands. Keep your back heel lifted. Inhale, crescent pose, hands up high. Just a couple breaths here. Always okay to bend that back knee. Exhale, bring the hands down to the inside of your front foot and walk your left foot off towards the left. Slide your back foot back slightly and then bring your back knee down to the mat. Lizard pose, maybe a block. Make some space in your spine. Growing the spine long out of the hips, telescoping your ribs away from your pelvis. Good. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Tuck your back toes. Lift your back knee. Step your back foot forward. Malasana squat. Good. Again, we might use this block still as a little extra support. Pick up your right foot, pull the right heel towards your butt, and then step it back, lizard pose. See if you can keep the length in your spine as you pick up the back foot and set it down for a squat. This is gonna help engage the core to keep that spine nice and long as the leg moves. We're going to get a little glute work, some hamstring work as we pull the heel towards the butt. Good. Take one more on each side. And we'll meet in Malasana. Take your hands back behind you and set your booty down. Good. Now come all the way down onto the back and take a little rest. Walk your feet as wide as your mat and windshield wiper the knees from side to side. And then the next time both knees are on the right, let them rest there. Option to stay right here. Option to stack your right foot on top of your left leg and give it a little extra traction towards the floor. Option to stay right where you are. Option to reach the left arm overhead, bicep by your ear, for more of a side body stretch. Exhale, arm comes down. Remove the right foot if you stacked it. And windshield wiper the knees one time to each side. And then both knees go towards the left. Pause here. Now this side might be different. Option to stay just as you are. Option to stack left foot on top of the right leg for a little extra weight. 
Option to take the right arm overhead. Reaching out of the right hip into the right knee, forward and down. And if the right arm is raised, reaching through the right fingertips so that the side body gets long. Inhale, release the foot if it's stacked, bring the right arm down, and one more windshield wiper, both knees side to side. Good. Bring the feet hip width apart, soles of feet on the floor, and inhale to lift the legs so that the shins are parallel. Pull your left foot towards your right glute, so it's kind of at a an angle here. And then grab your left foot with your right hand. Bring right sole of foot and left leg down to the mat, keeping that connection of hand and foot. And then use the traction on that foot to help you get a little quad stretch here. Once again, reaching out of the left hip through your left knee. Option to take left arm overhead. That'll be a little bit more side body, maybe hip flexors. Keep the left leg pretty active. Actively stretching the outer leg muscles. Good, and let that go. And then take your left uh, ankle and cross it over your right thigh, kind of like we did earlier seated. Let the left leg fall forward and out. You might use your left hand to gently press the left leg forward. Option to thread the hands through if this version feels better for you. See if your hip bones can stay pretty even and level here. Good, exhale, release. And we'll switch sides, lift both legs. Bring your right heel towards your left glute, and then grab your right foot with your left hand. Both legs come down towards the mat. Reach from inside your right hip through your right knee. Keep the low belly a little bit toned. Option to take the right arm overhead if more side stretch feels good to you. And check in with the muscles of the face, the jaw, the forehead, the back of the neck. Exhale, release that, and cross right ankle over left thigh. Option to stay here. Option to bring the knees closer to the chest. Imagine reaching equally through the right and left sit bones and stretching your sit bones towards the top of your mat, like your spine is growing longer along the length of your mat.
Exhale, release. Hug both knees in towards your chest. And then on your exhale, let your legs go out long. Move any props that might be in the way. Let the arms rest down by the sides of your body. You're welcome to give yourself a little pillow with your cushion or your blanket. And just take a couple minutes to be still and to rest. And just like the challenge of moving and the challenge of embodying the standing yoga poses that we did today, Engage in the challenge of being still. Notice what happens in your body and your mind when you try to do nothing. Notice if the mind immediately starts racing and making lists. Notice if suddenly the body has 10 different itches that need to be scratched. Maybe just insert a gentle pause when you feel those things. Maybe they don't need to be done or thought about right now. Maybe they can be gently set aside to come back to later. So that right now in this moment, your body and your mind and your soul can simply rest in peace and quiet and stillness. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you'd like. If you feel that your rest for the day is finished, you gently start to awaken your body with some small movements. Being really disciplined to allow this to be a slow awakening. No rush, no jerking motions. And eventually, You'll gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat and just take one moment in your seat to softly close your eyes and place your hands somewhere that feels good to you. Give a little bit of love to yourself for coming to your mat. And then send a little bit of love out into the world, maybe to a specific person or a group, to your community, your family. Just send that little droplet of love out. May our practice bring more peace and love to our lives and to the world. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste.